well. You don't even seem to realize that. To some extent, this this movie does play into the fear that many people have of their in-laws. <laughs> but I wondered for, for each of you, what should we fear in Kindred? And I wonder, you know, what part of that appeals to you? In-laws is a big thing. I mean, it's a fairly drastic um, sort of in-law scenario. Um, hopefully it's very rare. Uh, but um, And we sort of took it to the extreme. I've never had any experiences like this with my in-laws. No, no, Good. You know. Um, nothing, nothing this extreme. One certainty in one's own mental health as well, how that determines uh, behavior. I guess kind of tradition and responsibility versus freedom and choice, which manifests itself in the house and that lineage, but also in Charlotte's pregnancy and her right to her own body. I really fundamentally feel the key to the film is Tamara. And she has such a huge inner life which radiates in on the screen, that I feel it becomes about lots of things, um, not least panic. And uh, she's mentioned and, and Jack saying, you know, there are of course themes in, in it, but there are themes in everything. It's the performance of things that are off the theme that I think is the thing that a viewer identifies with. I mean, what was so interesting about the premise of the film was that it's about someone who doesn't necessarily want that child and doesn't necessarily want to be with that boyfriend. That's precariousness, and I think there's not a soul on the planet, whether you you know understand the genre or not, who doesn't feel that precariousness, especially at the moment. <laughs> but you did mention the house, and it's such a beautiful location, and it does so much to help establish the the mood and atmosphere of this film. But I also read that you know this house actually was where there were production offices and wardrobe and everything. And I wondered how does that affect your performance? How does that help you inhabit these characters and and you know existing in the space? Well, you're never late for a shot. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. I thought, I, I know what the other two felt, but I loved it. I, I think I've always wanted to make films in groups. I made a film once initially with Bernardo Bertolucci producing, which was made like that in a house with everybody making the film in the house. And I don't know whether you two guys felt that, but I love that the hair and makeup were upstairs and that we could have biscuits and coffee when we weren't needed. <laughs> and, and yet the house was, you know, working its magic or its dampness on our skins and its desolation, which it's the most unique house. What Joe has done is stolen all the, the brilliant gifts the house gave. It's, it, it's, it's, um, it may be a set designer's paradise, but I'm sure the set designer just sat back and went, wow. <laughs> the set designer, you know, obviously did a great job, but th th there was whole rooms that um, on the, uh, the recce's and thing that we just walked in and went, can we just keep it exactly like that? Joe, Joe mm -hmm. just loved the look instantly. And a lot of the um, sort of famed cutaway shots in the film of a lot of the taxidermy and things like that, the very bizarre taxidermy scenes between like a, a squirrel battering a vole or something like that, like that, that, that's in the house. All of that was there. Yeah, all the boxing, we, it, just really strange things were all there. And even up to the point where the, the family who owned the house were actually there most of the time we were shooting, which was a another sort of bizarre experience. Um, but you also got to, Nick, you got to watch family actually existing in the house, which was wonderful. It just didn't feel like a film set at all, which was sort of why it worked, I think. And I'm curious too, was Quiche served on set? Was Quiche served to production? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think we ever got any Quiche. We, we did, someone's asked me that already about Quiche. Uh, <laughs> it was mentioned about four or five more times than it is actually in the final cut. Right. <laughs> we, we, they wanted to pull it out a lot more um, but I, I begged for at least one quiche moment because I just think it's um, sort of pathetic in its attempt from Thomas um, to sort of make Charlotte feel kind of at home at all <laughs> by getting the quiche Pathetic is a great word for it I mean it's it's funny it's one of those moments I think of that I think of uh, a scene at the hospital where, where you're filling a cup of water at the water cooler. Like there's just these banal things that become horrifying within this context. I think this film does such a great job of kind of like being very wry with its humor. And, and I wondered, was that something that you were trying to be conscious of as you were playing your characters? I mean, I think they're quite horrifying, but there is, again, there's a humor to those, to those roles too. And I, I certainly feel, I, I, I mean, I, I know a lot of women like that mm -hmm. who are trapped in an inheritance idea about the house. And indeed, I think the family who we were filming amongst were part of that tradition where 
the family inheritance of the house is more important than the fact that a whole new class of people have risen up and made their livings elsewhere, but the house represents too much to the family line. I mean, it's, it's a terrible trap. And that way I was very you know, sympathetic to, to Margaret. Tomorrow's character represents the new world. And I think there's a clash, even if it wasn't about trapping her with the baby and keeping her locked up. She's in university, she has no connection with anybody to do with, with that house or with any of their values. And I, I think that's also, I mean, tomorrow maybe you could say something about that. You know, I did think it was funny, but it's also sad. <laughs> <laughs> I actually find a lot of the humour in, 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 in um, Charlotte, in Tamara's character, because, because the, the other two are, are so sort of peculiar. Um, and Tamara, I, like wh- whether whether meant or not, but I think it probably was with sort of the audience at the same time, sort of raising an eyebrow or or, or, or eye rolling at these weirdos. Um, so a lot of the comedy comes from the bouncing off on onto the sort of normal yeah. person mm-hmm. in the film, because otherwise, if 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 Tamara was just as weird as uh, you and I are in it, then it it it, w- it wouldn't be funny. And I think we'd all watch it with a certain sort of God, are they all all right? Whereas Tamara does that for the audience as well as as go through hell. So and the the, the fact that she managed to find that's quite amazing. But Jack and I had a ball doing those things like the whiskey glass. Do you remember the whiskey going? I have another whiskey. It's all about whiskey, and we both understood that so well. It was so brilliant. It was there was just so many moments of those moments that you get before action of just going. Wouldn't it be funny if we did this? Yeah. <laughs> which which makes, it always makes it such a joy. Yeah. Don't you realise you're the one who's sick? Ah! There's been too much death in this family.